Hey folks, we spent a day today putting up some uh, fencing, sheep proofing our paddock there because we've kept our sheep in this little quadrangle here, which is only 20 by 20 metres and sounds like a big area, I know, but not for 13 sheep and they destroyed our trees. Yeah, they ain't be bloody trees. <laughs> Something nice has come out of that because as I was walking over here to start this and I'll show you the trees in a section in a second. Come over here. I spotted something which is a little bit early for what it's doing. Come. <laughs> it's a bit of a mess out here, folks. Have a look at it now, and in about a week's time, I want you to come back and have a look. Well, I'm going to come back and show you what it's going to look like. We're going to give this a quick overhaul. This is the overwintering, but it's not the, the lily pillies. It's not the English box that's out of shape, or the roses that need a prune, or the... Uh, what sonias that are about to burst in flower, or the cape weed, or the cooch and buffalo grass growing everywhere. <laughs> it is this glorious wisteria. How gorgeous is that? There's thousands of flowers on it. Now, last year it got ruined by heavy rain and heat. One sudden burst of heat and rain knocked it out, but it's flowered earlier this year. It normally comes out in October. Wait, it is October. <laughs> I've lost, but COVID's lo I've lost my mind. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> it's October, right? Well, we're on time, we're on cue. There we go. I'm back. We've got a purple wisteria. Now, I was meant to prune this and the time got away from me. It's so laced with branching everywhere. It's, it's just covered. It's too many, too many branches. I've got to thin it out. It's too late now. I'm just going to admire it. Look at the colour. Can you see the amount of colour coming through? It hasn't fully bloomed yet. Just about to burst out. We've got a white one and we've got a purple one. Now, I've got to get rid of all these suckers, all these, these runners. They just branch out everywhere. If I let it go, this is all I just wanted to show you because from this glorious, colourful environment, we're going to go back to misery now. <laughs> A while back, and we're talking at least well before pre-COVID, actually, these are these were on the brink of extinction. They had they were laid with scale, and a close look in here you'll see the sooty mould. Now you've probably seen this sort of sooty mould before on other plants. You can get on your gardenias, on your lemon trees, almost on any type of plant. Scale will appear, and it does suffocate it. And the sooty mould is basically caused by an excretion, which is there. Um, you can call it a sweet nectar that the uh, scale releases, and it attracts ants and other insects to it, and aphids and that, and they cause it to spread by walking up and down and uh, all over the plant. Now, my father's theory was, if in doubt, just prune it. And that's what we did. We didn't spray it. We should have sprayed it. We could have sprayed it earlier on, but it was so infested, we cut it back pretty hard. It was actually out here somewhere. So we did cut it back right hard and exposed a lot of the wood and left a few leaves on it and have a look at it. They've bounced back up again. So we gave them a feed. If you've got scale on your plant and it's really excessive, give it a hard prune. I was just thinking about my trees over there. Come on, because I've got to give them a hard prune now. My cameraman just reminded me that I didn't say what to spray. And it's basically your home brew if you want. You can go through your kitchen pantry and find anything spicy, chili, garlic, oil, turmeric. A teaspoon of each, four ingredients, chili, garlic, oil, turmeric, one teaspoon of each, and a couple of drops of uh, dishwashing liquid in one litre of water. In the pot, boil it up, let it cool, strain any solids out, put it in your spray bottle, use our easy hand sprayer, and drench your plants and do that every seven to ten days and that'll clear pretty much all your scale it'll clear whitefly aphids um, all the larger insects not so much like your caterpillars and colding moths and that not so much but all the little ones you know the aphids white flies and scale the basic stuff like that chili garlic oil soap turmeric one liter of water let's go and have a look at these trees we just had krishna's teeth uh filed down a bit because he's been nailing on all our trees uh, and he's done a bit of damage around the property which is you know that's what the horses do if you don't get their teeth organized now we had the dentist come over the horse dentist hey krishna how are you mate he's a bit sedated <laughs> all right mate you're a bit off <laughs> i'll let you go there you go hey Carl, careful he's gonna step on you look at this yeah, all right, I did a bad job of fencing it off. I can see that. But really, 
the reason why I didn't fence it off any better, I was hoping to be able to get into this property sooner, or sorry, get up there and fix the fencing sooner. So we hotwired it, and then my camera operator told me, he goes, you didn't do a good job of it. We've got to fence it off. We should have done it from the beginning. I said, no, 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 and I know better. But he obviously knew better. So it was one day too late. The grass has been mowed down to the ground because that's what sheep do. And they turned themselves into goats. They thought they were goats, so they started gnarling on my, look at this, this is my, my apricot tree. This was loaded with apricots, leaves and apricots, just like that there, all the way down, wherever they could reach, they stripped it. Literally stripped it. I've got to clean the tips off. Have a look at all this damage up here. They pushed their way into it through the, the fencing and it's just got to clean it all off like that. So tip pruning it. I don't want to take it all the way down because there's nothing left of the tree anyway. So just tip prune it so we don't have a, a wound on the end. Nice clean cut, not a tear like that. And hopefully, well look, it will recover. It will push on new foliage, but we aren't going to get any more fruit on that. Now that's the apricot. They started on the orange tree. Did they finish it off? They tried to. They tried to. Look at that, they stripped it there. Look at that. Well, that's not the worst part about it. It's the lemon tree. <laughs> you recognise this tree? <laughs> Look what they did to it. Seriously. Stripped it bare. We were talking about this having a blow wave style 80s hairstyle to the one side because of the northerly winds. Well, bugger that, there's nothing left on this tree to blow wave. Oh. Just got to cut back like this. If you've got a tree that looks like this, <laughs> if you've got animals in your garden that do this to your plants, I tell you, you better own a spit roast. That was a plum. It's still got some plums on it. Look, baby plums. We're going to have a tree with plums on it, no leaves. Come and meet my girls. Have a look at that. We've got six ewes and seven kids. And we've numbered them so we know which one we're eating first. <laughs> I'm joking, <laughs> right? <laughs> So we know which baby belongs to which mum. See number mum, 22, she's got the twins. We haven't taken the tails off yet. There's number 22, there's number four, number four. Hey, number four's gone to number 30. What's going on here? No, that's number eight. Hey, it's okay, plenty for everyone to have. Well, let's hope this uh, fencing actually stops and we've made it a lot larger, a bit more sturdy, a few more garden stakes. And uh, let these London plains grow big, tall and give them some shade during the hot summer days. Get out in your garden, get some planting done. I've finished doing my fencing, I'm going back into the garden to look after my veggies too. Check out our website, vasilisgarden.com, and follow us on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube channel from Eva Silly, Maresi. Lots of great specials to check out too. Maresi.